Hi, for this tutorial we're going to do a quick introduction on how to use AWeber. And this site may look a little bit complicated, but once you learn how to use it, you're going to see it's really easy and it's going to make doing all of your email work and email listings much more fun. So let's go ahead and take a look. I've already logged into my account and on my home page we can choose our current list. And this will show us all of the email lists that we have right now. And each of my lists has a different set of subscribers to it, so I can make sure that the correct subscribers are always getting my correct emails. You can also do a subscriber search where you can put in their email or their name and then click go and it will bring up your subscriber. Over to the right you'll see that they have live webinars including a how to get started webinar that you can register for. Let's scroll down and take a look. Here are my list stats. These are my list names that tell me which lists I use for each of my emails. It shows me new subscribers today, new subscribers yesterday, how many are subscribed, how many have unsubscribed, our grand total altogether, and the list completion. And this shows us how many of our completion steps have been finished. If I scroll down, you'll see that we have recent broadcasts. And these recent broadcasts show the newest emails that we've sent out, how many have bounced, which means that they've gone to the email address, but the email system has bounced them back without allowing them to go through into the inbox, how many complaints you've had, how many people have opened it, and how many people have actually clicked on some of the links that are in the email. That way you can see which of your emails are most successful in catching people's attention and which ones they'll go through to read more. At the bottom are our pending broadcasts. These are the emails that we haven't sent out yet. And this includes, again, our list name, when they will be sent. And the pending broadcasts don't necessarily mean that they're in the future at some point. These could be broadcasts that I set up but never actually sent through. As you can see, some of these are dated 2010 and 2011, and right now we're in 2012. So we've got our subject and also the status of this pending broadcast, which means that we might still be reviewing it, but we haven't sent it yet. At the bottom, at the bottom of the list stats page, you'll see that we can also create a new list if you've decided that there's another set of people that you want to create emails for. So up at the top, we're going to click on My List. And again, this is going to show us our email marketing and analytics, how many subscribers, how many people have unsubscribed, and how much of our setup is done. We can also deactivate these mailing lists right over here on the right. You can create a new list, or you can back up and export all of your active lists. And you can export these into a zip file that will have all of your subscribers, messages, and broadcasts. And it will send it to your chosen email address. Back up at my list drop down, it's going to allow us to choose custom fields. Custom fields tell us what information you want to collect, so you can create a web form where you ask subscribers for that information. For instance, we could put in address or phone number here, and the subscriber would put in their address or phone number in order to be put on your list, and you would click Save. Next on the drop down is Automation. Automation rules subscribe or unsubscribe people to the list when they subscribe or unsubscribe to another list. Let's say that you have two separate lists that people want to be on and they want to get off of one list and it will automatically take them off the other if you decide you want to use this. As it suggests, only create one rule per list. That way you don't have contradictory automation rules. Another suggestion that this makes is that when someone subscribes to one of your lists when they do a purchase, it will unsubscribe them from your prospect list. So they will no longer get the emails that you send out that are trying to bring them to your business once they've already come to your business and are using your products. That eliminates spam and keeps your potential customers a lot happier. You would choose your action and then click on Save Automation Rule. Next on the drop down is the email parser. The email parser allows you to put in shopping carts and third party applications. We also have membership sites and podcasting tools, lead services that can lead you to potential customers, and you can put in custom parsers by adding new. You would put your full text of your email down here and the full headers, and at the bottom click test. And it will show you if your email parsing worked. Next, let's go to messages. 
Let's say that you want to set up an email that after you send the initial email to your prospect trying to get their attention, let's say you want to follow up on it to remind them once again that you're there and are available for them. You can go ahead and put that in here in follow-up messages. It also allows you to test, copy, or delete your message. You can also click on a new HTML message to make a whole new one. Down below is the campaign sharing. If you have another list or account that you want to bring in messages from for this particular list, you can turn your campaign sharing on. And you can do it for follow-ups only, broadcasts only, or for follow-ups and broadcasts. And click Save. Or, if you already have a predefined campaign you'd like to use, click on Load Campaign. Next, let's look at Broadcast. And this is what's going to send an email newsletter or another one-time message to your list. So this means that if you have, say, a special announcement that you want to make to your current customers, you would just click on New HTML Message, Plain Text Message, or Paste in HTML, and make your whole new message. Now remember, this one won't be reoccurring. This is just going to be one broadcast that you send out, although you can copy it if you decide you want to do it later. We also have blog broadcast, and this is going to create a newsletter broadcast automatically when you have a blog RSS feed. So let's say that you do a weekly update or even a daily update. Every time you do an update, this is going to send out an email with that new blog post. Next, let's look at subscribers. This will allow you to search or export subscribers from your list including all your subscribers, or you can choose them added today, yesterday, past seven days, etc. You can select your field. So say you want to find everyone who lives in a particular state, you would just go down to, let's say you want to find everyone who comes from a particular postal code, you can click on postal code, put in the postal code that you want, you can choose an order, and hit search. Through the drop-down, you can also add, import, unsubscribe, block, or suppress people. Let's say we want to add people. Let's go ahead and click Add on the drop-down and add a subscriber. Keep in mind, you only want to add people who have asked you to add them. If you don't, you could end up sending up a spam alert and you can get your email list shut down. You don't want that to happen. So if they've come to you through a purchased email list, through a co-registration of subscribers, or anyone else who haven't come directly to you and signed up for your list, AWeber is not going to allow you to use them. Let's look at web forms. This web form wizard is going to allow you to create a page that will pop up and it's immune to pop-up blockers or any other existing traditional pop-ups that are in your web page. And a lot of people will use these to say to either get names and email addresses for people who come to visit their site or they use it for say a survey that they want to put on there about the ease of usability for the site. So this is a great tool to help you really connect with your audience. And then we have reports. I'm going to click on settings under reports and this shows us our opens over time. This includes the number of opens over the past 30 days for all the lists, how many have followed up, how many have opened the broadcasts, and how many are unique. Look at all of these different types of lists we have though in reports. We can look at pretty much any information we would need to make sure that our email blast is being successful. And that helps us go back in for new blasts, figure out what was successful about the good ones, and then use that for the new ones that we're going to put together. Now up at the top tab is My Account. My Account is going to show you all your account information, including your name, all of your billing information, and your notification emails. So you'll want to check these whenever you come into AWeber. Next, we've got the My Apps tab on the top. And this shows you your app showcase. You can use any of these widgets to personalize all of your emails. You can put in PayPal tabs, you can put in a Facebook web form, a WordPress web form. All of these different apps are free that you can put into your emails. We also have our help screen and of course the logout. Now I'm going to go down to the bottom of the screen and take a look. Down here we can look at the AWeber Labs website which is where you can get the AWeber's API and that allows you to integrate your AWeber account with your website. We also have a quick help box that gives us a knowledge base and you can do a search of AWeber as well. Down here on the bottom right, we have privacy and anti-spam regulations for the site, and we can email, use Twitter or Facebook, or use this button to bookmark this web page. So that gives you a good idea of how to use AWeber 
just for a quick introduction. Now if you keep watching the rest of our tutorials, you'll see how to do even more with it and we'll go more in depth with each of these functions. So thanks for listening, I hope this helped you out, and I'll see you at the next tutorial.